So once again, U.S. forces under assault in the Middle East and then launching a retaliatory strike against Iran-backed militants operating this time in Iraq. The previous uh, exchanges have been in Syria. So that happened after Tehran's proxies attacked American troops at least 66 times, and Hamas's war in Israel continues to increase the risk of a broader conflict, as you see the expansion of this uh, in very unsettling ways in many aspects. So with that, we want to bring in retired four-star General Jack Keane, Fox News senior strategic analyst, former vice chief of staff of the Army, and chairman of the Institute for the Study of War. General, good to have you here today. We heard a little bit about what happened in Iraq. Uh, there was um, an AC-130 gunship that we're told was in the area when there was a vehicle attack on our base at al-Assad, and it was able to respond to it rather quickly. What, what was your take in terms of what we just heard from the Pentagon on all of that and how it transpired? Well, I think uh, what this was certainly uh, is fortuitous for us that we mm -hmm. had the means to defeat the, the attackers and do it quite uh, decisively with a C-130 gunship, which is, which is amazingly devastating mm -hmm. and, and certainly preserved life in, in doing all of that. The attacks in the past have been different, where we have scheduled an attack and we haven't gone after the people who were directly involved in an attack. We've gone on after mm -hmm. weapon stores and ammunition and a safe house where it's possible that some people were involved. But this is, this is people, this is actually an attack is underway, and we thwart the attack and kill the attackers. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously a defensive operation uh, on our part that was, that was very successful. So let me ask you this. There are reports in The Washington Post that there is there are inner struggles at the White House among the Biden team over the response to these 66 attacks. And in those, you've got 62 U.S. service members who have been injured in all of these attacks. And we can show the map uh, once again to show people where these are happening. And Sabrina Singh, who is the deputy press spokesperson at the Pentagon, was asked about you know, she's basically the question was I, the deterrence is not working. And here's what she had to say about that. Listen to this, General. I know I know 66 is a high number. But again, we have days sometimes where we don't have attacks. So is it, it like would you say that the strategy is not working if one day goes by where there's not an attack on U.S. forces? I'm not saying that that's the way to caveat it. But what I am saying is that we're not seeing we don't want to see this conflict widen out. What do you think of that response, General? Well, it's, it's pretty ludicrous, uh, to be frank about it. I mean, we've, mm -hmm. since the Biden administration has been in power, I think we've had, it's been documented, 150 something attacks on our forces uh, in Iraq and Syria. And to remind our audience, why is Iran doing this? Their history is they don't get involved directly themselves. They've had a brilliant strategy for 43 years, use multiple proxies from foreign countries, not their own, to do their dirty work for them. And the purpose is to drive the United States military presence out of the region and also to destroy and weaken the state of Israel. That is what this is all about and has been about for 43 years. The history shows us, and I fundamentally disagree with those who say, if the United States responded strongly, we're going to expand the war and we'll have a regional war on our hands. The history does not support that conclusion. The people who come to that conclusion, it's their fear of this escalation that is driving them. And why do I say it doesn't support that? Because the proxy strategy has been largely successful. Secondly, the two presidents who challenged this and said, no, the only way we're going to deter them is we have to attack something that Iran values. And Reagan hit their oil platforms, uh, oil platforms at sea and also the IRGC bases after they were attacking U.S. ships, escorting tankers through the Persian Gulf in the mid-'80s. Trump went after the commander of the IRGC Quds forces to deter their attacks. Qasem Soleimani, well documented. Did the Iranians attack back? Yes, they did. It was a measured attack. And what happened after that? Nothing. Mm -hmm. What happened after what Reagan did? Nothing. Mm -hmm. History supports that Iran does not want a direct 
war with the United States. This, this is the issue that the administration and those who fear this cannot come to grips with. Oh, there is a possibility that's going to happen. You know, well, of course, there is a possibility it's going to happen. But the evidence does not support it. Why would Iran ever want to get involved in a direct conflict with the United States that would involve the destruction of the thing that they value the most, their regime? And they know that. That is why they have the proxy strategy. And, and that is, it's, to me, it's fundamental, it's logical, and you got to see through it, and you have to find yeah. some spine to execute it. Understood. Very quickly, if you can, General. Um, you know, it, it appears, though, that Iran is quite emboldened at the moment. We're seeing these attacks in the north from Hezbollah. You're seeing a lot of activity to the east from the Houthis. Uh, they took a ship. They said they're going to take more ships that come into the region if they have any Israeli affiliation. It does. It, it, there's an argument to be made here that Iran believes that now is the moment to succeed in their goal of, of finishing off Israel. Well, I think there's something happening here with the three of our major adversaries, China, Iran, mm -hmm. and Russia. All of them have become considerably more aggressive during this administration. I'm not getting into the politics. I'm just getting into the perceptions that they have. They believe the leadership is weak and the United States is in decline, and there is a window of opportunity here to take the initiative and achieve some of their national goals. You saw that the invasion of Ukraine. You see it with President Xi's fundamental increase in two years of aggression mm -hmm. in the, yeah. in the uh, Taiwan Strait, South China Sea, it's Im amazing how much he stepped up his game. Mm -hmm. And Iran is doing the same thing. This is not independent of each other. This is a fundamental conclusion they've come with. They operate in terms of their own national interest, but they also are supporting each other. They have a common goal. Take advantage of the United States when they perceive it's weak and they think it's in decline. Whether that's a, just it's a perception or a fact, it, it's irrelevant. That's what they believe, and they're acting yeah. on those beliefs. Seems pretty clear uh, and well articulated, as always, by you, General. Thank you very much. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you, General Jack Keane. Yeah, great talking to you, Martha. You as well, sir, always. Hey, everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.